Welcome to the Swedish Junior Hockey Podcast. Uh, a little bit of more international flair today. A Dutch, uh, originally Dutch hockey enthusiast via Sweden, uh, Wouter Hausebroek. Did I pronounce that okay? Mostly. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> it's uh, Wouter Hausebroek. Okay. With it's, a, quite, with a... it's quite hard to... Uh, 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 to, to say it in 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 non language, yeah, and especially with a southern Swedish dialect, uh, yeah, from Falkenberg, from Falkenberg, Sweden. Welcome to the Swedish Junior Hockey Podcast. Hi. This episode is brought to you by Scandlux, your home for Scandinavian luxury products for the U.S. market. You can find us at scandlux.com. So, um. I want to jump. The main topic today is going to be about Swedish hockey gymnasium or the hockey Academy and uh, put a huge plug right away for uh, uh, Walter's uh, uh, website, hockey, hockey And uh, we'll make sure that we'll put a link in there, but I came across this because um, you liked one of the episodes and then I looked up your profile and I saw your website and I went into it and I thought, where has this been? Why, why have I missed this? And it's got all the information that I need. Correctly. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to navigate through your website and then we're going to weave through some questions. And I think it's really timely. We're recording this middle of February, probably release a few weeks from now. But talking about kind of the differences between the different types of hockey gymnasiums, uh, maybe a little bit about the history, not too much detail about the history, mm. but specifically, so why I thought this would be good timing now is a lot of, let's see, what birth year are going into hockey gymnasium for the fall? That would be... It's 07. 07. So if you're in 07 yeah. right now, you probably know where you're going. Yeah, they are looking for their gymnasium and waiting for a reply, or maybe yeah. we have a re reply. So some of them already know where they're going. Some of them don't know. And Absolutely. so it's a really good timing here. But I thought it'd be good for both the Swedish and the American audience or Canadian audience to talk about. What is this thing when, when we say gymnasium? Funny, funny thing about when I came to the U.S. in 1993 – gymnasium because i just came from gymnasium gymnasium is the athletic hall over here yeah <laughs> so people were really really confused when i was talking about gymnasium and but for the for the u.s canadian audience it's really the academy or the high school equivalent uh so after ninth grade so 10th 11th 10th 11th and 12th grade Post secondary education. So when yeah. you're done with, is it still that way? Once you're done with ninth grade, you, it's it's not compulsory. Yeah, if, when you when you're done your ninth grade, you can choose two or three years to the gymnasium in Sweden. But you don't have to go to gymnasium, right? You don't have to go, but it's, it's quite small to do so. Otherwise, yeah. it's, maybe it's quite hard to find a good job. Yeah. So uh, they recommend to to go to to. Swedish college. Yeah. So, but let's back up the tape a little bit because you're yeah. from, you're from Holland and you yeah, um, can't be really big in Holland. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm original Dutch, but I'm Swedish now. Uh, I've changed my nationality. Uh, uh, oh, don't have to go in so far. Well, let's say but, that your wife is Swedish. My wife is Swedish and it was more convenient to be Swedish for the, for the Texas and you yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but but you've been in Sweden since I moved to Sweden in two thousand and five. Yeah. So how did you get into? I would imagine that soccer is a lot more the sport in in uh, in Holland. But when did you get into hockey? Well, actually, I always have been interested in, in hockey. Was, um, when I lived in Holland, we had a, a quite good hockey team. It was not the the best. Uh, they played B level. Okay. 
Um, but my wife's dad, he played, um, he was a hockey player in uh, Hamsat Hamish in Hamsat. Okay. So that was a big interest of him. Um, he is from um, Unseswick. This is very uh, a, a small, famous town in in, in East Sweden, famous on from the, the hockey. Um, so that was the first time I've I've got in contact with uh, the Swedish hockey. Okay. So, so. So you so because you became a fan, he became a fan of you. Well, sort of. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was more after we got kids. My yeah. my. My boy, he is uh, he's 14, um, 40 years old, and he started playing hockey when he was uh, four in Falkenberg. And of course, like a, a hockey parrot, you're in the in the in the in the ice uh, surrounding. What do you say? Yeah, hockey surrounding and, and uh, helping him with the the, the clothes and and, and the, all the stuff. Um, so of, of course, there's a lot of time spending in in the spending with hockey. Yeah. So, and when he was about ten years old, he moved to uh, the team Hamsted Hammers in Hamstad. And that's a, a different kind of surrounding, a bigger club. Um, so. That... Yeah, and I think that so so that gives us a little bit of 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 um of scope and and. Uh context around so when did you start the and how did you start and why did you start the website on hockeyumnasia.se well this, it's quite funny um i did some athletics myself uh, on a quite high level i trained about six seven days a week um so i i know what it is to 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 do sports in combination with a study Yep. It didn't go so well for me uh, because I, I put too much time on, on my sports instead of my study. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, I, I I know the drills. What it yep. uh, what it means to to combine uh, your favorite sport with a study. And in 2000 and 2021, there was a guy I knew from from Falkenberg. He was looking for a hockey gym, a, a college. Yeah. He he couldn't find. Uh, he, he told me when I talked to him. He told me that he was. It's quite hard to to know the the different of levels and where to find all hockey colleges. Yeah. And since I'm working within digital marketing and uh, building websites myself, I thought, well, okay. When it's so hard to find a hockey college, why not to start a platform where everybody can find information? And it was like a hobby, uh, like you saw it. Yeah, properly. yeah. yes, uh, it's exactly right. And in the meantime, I've got a lot of uh, inf um, positive reactions of, of um, clubs and parents. And I tr started to develop the, the, the website more and more till till now so i put a lot of energy a lot of information in this platform to inform young hockey players to to make the dream come true that's yeah. my but also to to inform them about the difference between the national and the local colleges in yeah. sweden because that's that's a difference yeah and and just for clarification and and what we're talking about here is 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 um pushed by the Swedish Hockey Federation and yeah. established by the Hockey Federation but their focus has been on the execution of the of of the of the content not necessarily the marketing of it well actually the Swedish Hockey Federation and the, the Swedish Hockey Federation is uh, mostly concentrated on the national hockey colleges and that's because they are part of the um uh, education, the Swedish education, to make sure that the best young players in Sweden will come to the best clubs. So that we talk about SOL and Allsvenskan hockey yep. clubs. Yep. So they are helping them to recruit the best players. So they've got their scouts around Sweden 
they have their lists um, before you're searching to the national uh, the national college uh, hockey colleges they they have a they know who they're looking for but there's a very big amount of, of young guys who like to play hockey as well and then you have the the other two levels the Liu and LIP as per Mesa. Yeah. And the local colleges. Um, they will not say they play a, a lower level. Uh, they, they, you will find one as well and one Osvenska club who's not having the national college. Um, so they may, it will not say if, if you're not getting in the national hockey college. Um, it's done. You can go through another way by Lee or LEP. Yeah. So let's go back a little bit too here. So so if you are in 07 now. Yeah. And and I think from a from a um from a culture um f- from a let me respond to this right quick. From a culture standpoint, um Everybody, pretty much, when you're growing up, you're playing in the in the in the like your son played in Falkenberry, so yeah. play all the way up through uh, Poik or U16. So you're 15 years old, right? 14 turning 15, up to and, 16, and and then some people play up a level. They may you know play yeah. play on multiple teams, but you're staying in your in your local town and then now i'm going to be faced with i may or may not have a gymnasium high school level in my hometown or i'm i I may but if i'm a hockey player so if if i'm a tennis player or i'm a soccer player or i'm a um i'm involved in in skiing Mm. you know pretty much if you're in malmo sweden and you're a downhill skier you're probably not going to go to an academy in Malmö, if you're yes. in skiing, you're probably mm-hmm. going to go to Umeå or yeah. somewhere up north where there's mm-hmm. snow more, more of the time. With hockey, though, there's a rink pretty much in, in every county, so to speak, somewhere. And there's multiple rinks, but not every town has a gymnasium. Yeah. So uh, where your son, where you grew up, Falkenberg, pretty good yeah. sized town, but they had a local organization. Mm-hmm. But did they have? Did they have a local gymnasium in Falkenberg? Yeah, but not for hockey. But not for hockey. That's my point that I want to want yeah. to. They may have one for if you want to be a teacher, or you want to. It's a pre college education, pre university. Well, if I may interrupt you, they have a co- they they have a college, but they don't have. Uh, a sports college, they, they do have NIU if if, may, if I may so yeah for soccer, but for not soccer. for yeah but not yeah. for hockey. So if you want to to find a, a, a hockey college, you have to move to Hamstad, which is a local, or you have to move to Engholm or uh, Gothenburg for the national hockey college. Yeah. So there is always a, a chance if if you're not move, if you're not living in 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 a big city or living in the city where they, they have the national hockey college, you have to move. Yeah, and and so some people they they may be able to commute, or they may have to move to an apartment, right? Yeah, that's right. So, um, but then there's. So the, let's talk about the difference between the NIUs and the LIUs or the LIPs. Uh, there is a big difference between, so there's 24, 23 or 24 NIUs, right? 32. 32. In, in uh, uh, 32, and it's inclusive, the, the, the hockey for women. Okay. And of course, you can find that on your website. Uh, yeah. And and here's where what's been challenging for me. You know, it's not been easy to find exactly who they are. And it's just what I've been doing is going through elite prospects. And then you can see, okay, here's the ones that are the, um, 
the SHL or Allsvenskan clubs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then there's differences between each one of those. Yeah. The NIUs. So what are some of those differences? Because you've got some that are newer and some that I, I know in Örnkrelsvik were Moodle yeah. plays. I think they were the, they had it before it was designated as an NIU. Yeah. They they were already established. Same thing in HV71 in Jön Shipping. They were one of the earlier ones. Uh, but what are the differences between the NIUs? So I'm going to go to your, if I go to hockeygymnasiet.se, first top thing in here is going to be NIU Hockey Gymnasium. And it's got uh, north, west, east, and south. Yeah. Uh, which is c- parallel to how the J18, what used to be J18. Well, actually, I I, I did it. I, I made a difference between north, west, east, and south because um, it's quite hard to, to see the, the combination and where the hockey nations are. Um, if you if you like a hockey player uh, are looking for um, a, or applying for a, a new hockey nation, um, most of the time you have to move to another city. That's one yep. thing. Yeah. Second thing is you have to choose a program, and the hockey colleges they have not always the same program. So if you're interested in um, software you have to go to Kos, uh, Koskona and if you like to go to if you like to to have a program like economics you can go to, to Malmö so it's not only if you have to you can choose a college but it's also the program then you have some of the the clubs they have a, a, a accommodation for you some don't so you have to look for yourself um but most the most interesting thing is that if you are looking for uh, the national hockey college it goes through the swedish hockey federation so you have to apply through the hockey federation yeah that's the difference between the national and the local so the national always go through the swedish hockey federation and then the clubs take over the list they get to make evaluation of the the selected players and they choose about around 12 to 14 players max per per year per year that means that the other half are playing in the team but not going to college at the same college so so how many teams did you? How many NIU's did you say? Thirty. You've got like um, thirty-two total. Okay. Uh, for women, it's about six or seven for women. Okay. And if, if, if you if you to in general, the total of hockey college on one hundred and twenty-eight. Yes. We have got thirty-two national, and the rest is local. So if if I take thirty-two times, let's look at a high number fourteen. So 450 kids right now are trying yeah. to get in. Yeah. Boys and girls that are 15 years old, they're trying to get into the NIUs. And why, so why would I want to go there versus the LIUs? Because the chance to be a prof- professional hockey player is bigger. All right. <laughs> so what are, the, what are the big differences? Well, there's the accommodation, uh, the, the staff train the staff, um, promote it. Um, you play against the best teams in Sweden. Yeah. Um, so your education, your the way you you can be better um, in those three years and when you play on a local level. Yeah. So if if I go to if we if we go back to episode twenty seven of the uh, Swedish Junior Hockey Podcast with Daniel Eriksson, who is in HV seventy one, it's yeah. a good one to kind of talk about their specific one. But they're talking about the difference in the staff. It costs a lot of money to run a NIU program yeah. because of the staffing that they have. 
but right. you are treated like a professional athlete to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, and the amount of training, the amount of ice time may not be any different than in a well, really performing LIU. Well, there is. There is? Have, yeah, you have more more um, more hours playing hockey. Plus, the, the difference is that they, they have special trainers for when you play defender or yeah. goalie or striker. So, so that means that your education in the club is more concentrated on you. Yes. So, of course, it's 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 better in the whole way. Yeah, and I think that and the level of competence among those the people that are in those positions, yeah, are not just a rookie uh, volunteer. No, these guys it's are, a, are pro. It's not a it's not a dad who's trainer. It's not it's you a and me. Professional trainer who is paid for his job. If yeah. he's not good enough, he may leave. They get a better one. So the whole staff is is concentrated on not only the way they on 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 the plays itself, but also the system they want to play. Yeah. Because if you if you educate a player, doesn't matter if you play hockey or soccer or whatever, you want to play a certain system so those players can come to the first team in the future yep and so it's it's more efficient so uh and and of course why does a club uh it's a it's a business right the clubs that are in these positions everybody would love to be able to be in this position because you're recruiting you have a you have a clear channel of the best players in europe to a certain degree not just in sweden mm -hmm. But you have Norwegian players, you have German players, you have Swiss players, yeah. you may have from the Eastern, uh, the, the uh, uh, Czech and 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 Czechia and, and Slovakia. Uh, mm. Not a whole lot of Americans. Um, no. there's, there's only one J18 player from the from uh, from the U.S. currently in in J18. Mm. His name's Eric Dalin, uh, but. Uh, so it's interesting why there's not more Americans coming over, but you know we're trying to do our part here and educate. But uh, these guys are coming over, are being highly recruited. Yeah. And and let's take Lexon. Let's have a Lexon moment, of course, in this hot podcast too. We always have to. But Liam Bischel came in, uh, just played for Swiss uh, not national team, national team, not just a junior world, but he came in in hockey gymnasium was recruited heavily came in and he didn't even play j18 he went straight into j20 and actually made the shl team as a 16 year old yeah now he was six foot three 220 pounds and you know very developed mm -hmm. i think they, they must have messed up his birth certificate or something uh because he was a man coming in but but why they're coming in, they're getting someone for, for free that makes the SHL mm -hmm. team instead yeah. of trying to sign a player to a contract. Mm -hmm. But what else is happening with, with uh, they're hoping that these guys are going to now end up, if you go to elite prospects, you hope that they're going to now have a draft or, or an NHL team next mm -hmm. to their profile that because they get money back from the SA from, from the NHL. Mm -hmm. So it's a business. It's a big business. So, all right. So if you're an 07 now, what, well, so when do they start recruiting? They're not recruiting 07s now. What? So if you were a hockey gymnasium, you're already done with your work for the next year. They've already yeah. got their people. Mm -hmm. how, how early, when does it start? They started uh, last year in, in September. Okay. And we have about three months to, to choose four different uh, different um, national hockey colleges and you send your uh, uh, you apply on the website of the, the Swedish Hockey Federation with the four hockey teams you like to to go uh, to and then in the end you make you have to make one choice 
And then they send your application to the club and the club make a decision. Are you coming in or are you not coming in? Are you coming in? Then you start the, the next year. So to uh, this year in what is it, August or September uh, on the gymnasium and the college. If you're not coming in, um, you have to, to look for another club. You can look, maybe you can find uh, a national anyway, or you have to go to an, a local. But if you're the best player in Sweden, as yeah. a... Uh, so Rasmus Dalin, when he was in Frölunda, yeah. he ended up going to Frölunda. He could have yeah. picked... He was the player of the year in TV Pucken. Mm -hmm. And he could have went anywhere. Yeah. He chose for because he was already I don't, to, I don't think they have to apply for a hockey college. Yeah. Get in anyway. Everybody wants Rasmus Dalin. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not sure who the 07 equivalent is this year, but there's someone there that is considered mm. top player in Sweden. Mm. Every one of these 24 men's academies wants that player. Mm. So they already know where they're going to go before they even apply, right? Uh, some of those, not everybody. Yeah. But the further down the list that you go, and that's just nat natural selection in terms of yeah. you, know, you have the top dog and then you end up the further down, you're going to have some that are going to be teetering. I hope to make it here, but maybe not. Yeah. That's, that's right. And, and uh, it's a big uh It's it's a big step, and and let's talk about that for a second. What happens to that athlete? Because what we're not talking about here is twenty two year old men. No, they actually they're quite young. They yes. are only sixteen years old, and they haven't make uh, they have to make uh, a life uh, a life decision. Um, and of course they got a lot of support of the parents, but. If you're not in the top five, you may or in the first line, um, you probably will not make much hockey hours. And if you not make a lot of hockey hours, maybe you will not develop as much as you if, as you want to. Yeah. Well, it's it's you have to make a decision. Do you want to play for Frölunda or Rögle or Lulio or sitting on on the bench? A lot. Yes. Or do you want to play for a local or play every match? And be the and be the first liner. Yeah. And every, of course they have, they've got a dream. And their dream is to be a professional hockey player. And most of them they think when I go to the national, there's a bigger chance to play to be a professional hockey player. But there are a lot of Uh, examples of players in Sweden who not even got, uh, on the, not even ho went to to a uh, hockey gym. Um, Johnny Adua, for example, he plays NOL. He yeah. didn't go to, to to hockey gym, to a hockey college in, in this yeah. case. Uh, he, he didn't. Okay. Play, he didn't play uh, TV book, uh, as well. That's right. So, so um, there, is a, there is a path, and I think that that's, yeah. what, people, that's what people – and, you know, uh, some people develop at a different rate. Uh, the late yeah. bloomers the late bloomers that may be physically uh, – certainly, if you are – if, if you did a, 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 a reverse engineering through elite prospects and you look at players in the SHL to see how many – played in the TV puck and, and how many did not, you'll see that the majority of them that played in the SHL also played in the TV puck. Yeah. But it's not a guarantee. Just yeah. because you didn't doesn't mean that you won't. So it just means that you're going to have to find a new path and find your way up. But but And just because you go to an NIU doesn't mean that you're going to make it. I think a more interesting one is to be able to say how many people went into an NIU program, got everything catered to them, and then fizzled out. You know, they didn't make it. Actually, we've got a quite interesting uh, interview with uh, Fredrik Johansson. He was former 
uh, Hamstad Hammers uh, coach, trainer, and he went to uh, a Norwegian um, team, and he was doing a presentation uh, last year for an elite hockey. Um, uh, 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 what can I say? Call it hockey. Yeah. And he was talking about what is a talent, and it was, was quite interesting because he doesn't he didn't talk about hockey itself. He talked about attitude, and to him, a talent is not a person who is who is good at hockey now at the moment. It's what you want to make of it in the future, yeah. and that's a difference between Sweden and. America, for example, at, we recruit very young people who maybe did not develop themselves at all or less when you go to college. Because when you go to college, you are much older, you are more mature. And when you're 16 years old, you are not mature. You are actually quite a child. Yeah. So, if you if you have a chance to go to a college and you have the best accommodation and the best trains, of course you'll develop much more. But those who may not go to a, a national college, they will not say they will not be a good hockey player. They still can be, be a good hockey player as long as they continue to compete, continue to train and find a club where they fit yeah. best. Because you have to find a trainer at a club who believes in you. Yeah, it was interesting. I had this conversation recently with Urban Umark, who's, you know, from Örnsköldsvik, was a coach in Modo, and he was there during the time uh, when when Marcus and Peter Forsberg and Marcus Naslund and Peter Forsberg. One of the things we talked a lot about this issue of what is the right or the wrong thing, and what he said was really interesting, and that is. You need to find a place where you can be, you're not the one guy, but mm -hmm. if you can be with a group of people that are, that are draw that are supporting you, that where you can compete. And I think that's what, what they had up there. What made Peter Forsberg unique was that they competed enormously in every practice, in every session as a group. Now, there wasn't 12 guys or 15 or 20 guys that may have competed, but there may have been six or seven guys that yeah. competed. And and I think that the challenge is going to be, so if you are the fourth line bench warmer where you are so far out of your league, you're not able to compete. That's right. And you're, and, and you're not able to, to, you're not in the right spot. No, and, the challenge, and the challenge, I think, is, unfortunately, there's a lot of young kids that get wrong advice or their self-view or their self-assessment is incorrect. They think they're here versus where they actually are. And I think that's such an important step of being realistic and real to, to where you really are. <clears throat> I think that the... the one of the problems of players who want to go to the national is not because they're a good player. It's more, it's mostly of because of their parents. Mm -hmm. Their parents want their kids to go to the national to be a professional hockey player. They will not say that their kids want to. Yep. They pushed. Um, that means that if they, if, if I may so, if they do not get to the national, there's a big chance that they will quit instead of continue playing hockey and enjoy playing hockey. So for me, if 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 I look to my own kid who's who may um, uh, choose hockey college next year, for me it's not important if he go to hockey hockey college. For me, it's important that he's enjoying playing hockey. Yeah. And if he wants to play hockey, I support him. So if if he choose not to go to national, or not to go to local, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's his life, is his choice he wants to make for the future. The hockey hockey 
uh, future or playing a, being a hockey uh, player, professional hockey player, is not a, a long term career. It's a very short career. Yeah. So it's not only thinking of playing hockey, it's always thinking about what's next. What comes next when I'm not playing hockey anymore? What ha- what happens if I may not coming in in SOL, Hockey or Svenska, or Hockey Etam? The three levels we have in Sweden, the highest levels. Yeah. Um, so if he's not motivated anymore playing hockey, there must be a future for him as well. So for me, it's more important playing hockey enjoying it, being with your friends, but also trying to find a good program to make a study to have a basic for the future. And I think most most of the parents agree, but there's also a small part who do not agree. They don't care about the study. They don't, yeah. ca- they don't care about the program. They are totally blind going to the national college to be a professional hockey player, which is very um, hard to to be. The man yeah. only maybe one percent of every hockey player every year gets to the SOL. Yeah, I I got a good example of uh, that. I think it's just comes to my mind. A very good friend of mine, uh, his son actually um, uh, he the, he was over here in in the U.S. and 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 played and I coached him and when he just got started and then went back to to Sweden, actually went to NIU in soccer, and kind of. Yeah. You know, he chose the path after ninth grade that soccer is going to be my sport. He was a good athlete, chose soccer, but continued to play hockey. Mm-hmm. And but what was so cool about the the place that he was at, and this is what I think is just such a good system in Sweden that that grows hockey players no matter what level, is while he was going to NIU for soccer, he was playing J18, J20. And division three yeah men's, men's division three uh did very very well and but got the love back for the game he kind of had you know because he was okay didn't make the tv puck tournament didn't make the niu made the niu in soccer instead and but still loved hockey but not maybe so he kind of fizzled out a little bit in his mind so he's choosing this path, but because he was in the right environment with and was challenged, so he was able to contribute at it with with the adults. Okay, Division Three level is not Hokietan Alsvenskan, but for him, he's with a group of people and he gets the love back. Mm. Now all of a sudden, he's in 05. Now all of a sudden, the J20 teams out there are starting to recognize him and start recruiting. Him yeah. for those teams and but then at the same time he's earning his merit points in the niu to be able to go to university somewhere mm-hmm. and 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 it grows a very balanced individual that still has the love for the game um, now and could that person make it into the shl maybe maybe not but i think the most important part is to have a have a balanced viewpoint um if I, if, I, if I may say so, yeah. uh, if it doesn't matter what kind of sport or study you, you're doing, if you're not balanced, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're not developing. And you will not last. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to be a good sportsman, you need to have the basics. You need to enjoy it and have the balance and have the support of your parents or your friends. And most of most of all, those who who are with you, um, uh, so as you said, uh, get love back. Yeah. And if you don't have that combination, it's quite hard to to develop or to be a, a a good person or a good sportsman. So I want to round out the conversation, which I think this segues really well because on your website you also talk about the next step. Yeah. Which I think I could tell this is kind of important to you yeah which is which is kind of like let's just not focus on on the one percent but That's let's right. focus on the bigger group and and yeah. i've talked to a lot about i just think that this and and you know we just had uh mike bloom on from the north american hockey league he, he talks about the 
uh, the, the, the junior A level or the, the tier two, tier one level, USHL, NHL uh, in, in the US. And it's all about people go there because they want to co go play college. And I just had Oscar Held on a few weeks ago who came over to the US to, to, to try to make it, played a couple of years in juniors. But one of the things he realized a little bit too late was he didn't have the focus on academics. Mm. So he had to take a bunch of prerequisite courses an entire year before he could even be eligible to get into college. Mm. Well, you don't have to, if you are diligent, so if you're an 07 now, maybe you are to be thinking about that it's only the, the eye of the needle to, to become a professional hockey player is very small. But there's a pretty good chance that if I'm a decent hockey player, maybe I can continue to play hockey for a, for a pretty good long length of time. The four years of college between 20 and 24, after J20, uh, is a pretty attractive option. Yeah. Because there's a lot of players that I'm sitting there, they just finished J20 in Sweden, and they're waiting for, man, they're hoping they're going to get the Allsvenskan or, or SHL contract, but they're not. And the only thing, I got three or four hockey ettan, the third level, or yeah. any hockey division two, the fourth level, wants you to come. But that's not, you're not making a living at that. And you're, so the, 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 the college alternative is, is a, when you weigh those playing hockey etan or going to play in college is pretty is, is a pretty attractive option mm -hmm. but what are the things that that you want people to be focusing on when it comes to academics if you want to go to college well actually you have to to separate the two things you have got hockey and you've got education uh, the swedish hockey federation introduced a new level uh, which is lep to higher the level between the, the national and the local, um, meaning that they want to to have players who are not fit in the national still choosing a local college. The problem in, in Sweden is, I think, that when players do not succeed to the first team, SOL, Allsvenska, or Hockeyetta, they quit hockey. And for the development of Swedish hockey, it's important that, this, that these players continue playing hockey. Because when you're 20 years old, you're not a man. You're your man because you're 20. But you, you have not developed yourself as, 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 um, as your strongest. Because as your strongest, you are maybe 25, 27 years old. And that means that you have got five uh, years left to develop. That means in those five years, you can make it to those three levels if you want to, if you get the right support and, right, and the right training. It had to be nice if we had the same... Um, that we had the same system in in as the US, in the US. If you're not playing N NOL, you've got the Farmer League, which should be a very good alternative in Sweden. Maybe they thought about it already. I don't know. Do not do not have the information about it. But that could be a, a good step for those players who do not fit to the level at this moment. They still have the the possibilities to continue playing hockey. Yeah. Um, I also think that in Sweden, um, you are, they are quite young making a decision being a professional hockey player. If you take college or university hockey, they are a lot older playing hockey, meaning that they also still develop playing hockey and play good hockey. Yeah. We don't have that kind of levels uh, in the league. That should be a good alternative. But if you go to the education, I think that the most of the players are concentrated too much on hockey and not on the education. 
education is a very important uh, part of being a professional hockey player. Um, last year, uh, um, I had a conversation with the uh, former uh, sport director of Reugle and talked a bit, uh, a bit about the hockey uh, National Hockey College and his thoughts about hockey was that it's very important to have a good education. If you not make good results on your education, you may not play hockey in the team. And that's what I think it's a very good argument for those players who want to be a professional hockey player. It's not only about hockey, it's, it's a lot more. Yeah. Uh, education is, is more than only a profession. It's, it's, it's about getting the, the, the mind rolling, um, being part of another community, talking about other things than only hockey. Hockey can be very concentrated, uh, maybe a bit sleepy uh, in, in, in the end. But if, 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 if you can talk about other things or so interested in other things, you can develop yourself in a much better way, meaning that you can not only concentrate on your education, but also can focus on hockey on a different level. Yeah. And, and that's what I, I, you know, one of the areas that I want to focus on moving forward a little bit, you know, it's, it's funny how this, this kind of podcast is taken lefts and rights and, and evolved a little bit, but you know, the idea in the beginning was to have, was for the American audience, but then they ended up having a bunch of Swedish people that are, that are listening in. And there's a big population there that, that is looking at that. And I think that what I'm, the intent of this is education and information. So what I'm trying to do now is broaden that topic a little bit of, okay, not just your J20, I'm looking at what am I doing next year, but really trying to focus that down here. I'm now 15 and this may be a, uh, this may be a, a, an option for me in the future is, is, um, you know, that I need to be thinking about now I'm 15 and I may be going to college. Mm. What do I need to do today that prepares myself? The hard part is very few people are thinking that way, right? You know, when they're 15. Um, but, but I think that the more education like that, it has a, whether you end up going to college in the U S or Canada, or you go to university in Sweden, whether you continue to play or not, those are life altering decisions that if you can be a really, really focused on both in the beginning is, is, is really good. So, all right. We, it's been good. Um, everybody, I, I want you to go to hockey gymnasiate.se. We'll put a link in here. It's super simple. It's very clean. It's very, very uh, easy to see all the different things for both boys and girls. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to spread the love here, uh, through my channels and, and, uh, when I see something good, I share it. So this is good. And, yeah. uh, and okay. I appreciate you coming on so much and talking about this subject and good to connect. And, and I'm sure that we'll be staying in touch, um, uh, in the future here. Uh, so thanks again for jumping on. Thank you.